Hello, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT. Dominate the GMAT is a leading provider of on-demand video-based test preparation for the GMAT to help students get into business school. What you're about to see is a segment from a full lesson from one of our courses. If you like what you see, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for not only this full lesson, but other course offerings as well. For now, enjoy your free session. You've probably seen questions like this if you've done any practice questions yet. And certainly a common type of GMAT geometry question asks you to find the area of a, of a shaded region. And here's my tip for you. The best way to find the area of a shaded region is to essentially subtract out what is calculable and whatever's left over is that shaded region. In other words, you want to think about shaded regions on the GMAT as leftovers. Uh, funny little cartoon here. Gosh, socks. Seems all we got is stale water and leftovers. Maybe that's your situation as well, but leftovers, leftovers, leftovers. Think about shaded regions as leftovers. Because the shaded regions are going to be these bizarre shapes. Again, the amount that's left over generally. And there are really no just straight up mathematical formulas or rules for finding the area of shaded regions because again, they're unorthodox geometric shapes. Instead, the strategy is to find the area uh, of the entire region. So to find the area of a shaded region, find, first find the area of the entire figure and subtract out from it the area of the unshaded region and the leftover is, is that shaded region. Take a look at this example. Here's what I'm talking about and we'll do this together. Question number four. In the figure below, ABCD is a rectangle and BE and CF are arcs of circles centered at A and D, respectively. What is the area of the shaded region? And then you have your answer choices. Give this a try based on what I just taught you. Go ahead and give it a try, press pause, and then we'll come back and do it together. Go ahead and press pause. How'd you do with this question? Hopefully you followed the rule I just taught you. Because to find the area of this shaded region, there's obviously no clear mathematical formula for that bizarre shape in blue, and yet we still need to be able to solve it, and we know that it's going to be the leftovers. And what does the rule say? Well, the strategy says what we do is we find the area of the entire figure. So basically what I want to do is I want to find the area of the rectangle, right? And then I want to subtract out the area of the unshaded region. Okay? So that's what the strategy says to do. There are going to be two parts to that. And if you notice the answer choices, that's actually uh, makes sense, doesn't it? Because that is what the answer choices look like. Not all of them, but a lot of them are something minus something else. And so it kind of makes sense that that's going to be the case, right? And so which of these is going to be the easiest to start with? Well, let's start with the area of the, of the whole rectangle. The total area is just going to be base times height. I mean, that's easy, right? So it's just 2 times 5 is, so it's 2 times 5, or 10. So it's going to be 10 minus something. And right away, answer choice E is pretty appealing because answer choice E says 10 minus, 10 minus pi. That'll be the answer if the unshaded region is pi. I don't know if it will be or not. We don't want to just jump to conclusions here. But nevertheless, that's what we're doing. So we have the area of the whole rectangle. And then what happens is when we subtract out the unshaded region, those two quarter circles, what's going to be left over is that shaded region. So that's our answer. Now the question, though, is what is the area of those unshaded regions? And the key lies in the question saying arcs CF and BE are arcs of a circle centered at D and A. In other words, if we were to kind of complete the circle, I'm not going to draw it because it will kind of mess up what we're doing, but the whole circle is centered there at D. And so when we are seeing that arc, really what we're seeing is one quarter of a circle. Does that make sense? And then same thing over here. And actually, if we add those two things together, that's half a circle. That unshaded region plus that unshaded region would be two quarters of a circle or a half a circle. Does that make sense? And so we know what to do with that, right? Because the area of a whole circle is pi r squared. Does that make sense? If we had the whole circle, 
it would be pi r squared. But the unshaded region is just half of that circle. So what we want to do is just one half of pi r squared. And then what's radius? Because now we know what we're looking for. And this is how you want to use your scratch paper. And if you weren't seeing where to go with this, hopefully now you're seeing it. But here's the point. I'm just writing down kind of what I'm seeing. Well, I know I need that. What's that? Well, here's a formula. Okay, now I'm there. What's R? Oh, that's what I need, right? So now I can start to explore what R is. And maybe you don't see it, but now we can search for that. What would the radius be? Well, if this were the whole circle, right, all the way kind of around here, what's the radius? What's well, being given to us? Because the center A would be the center of the circle. That means that 2 would be the radius, right? So we can just kind of plug 2 in for radius. So what's 2 squared? 4. So it's 4 pi over 2 is just 2 pi. And there's our answer. The area of the unshaded region is 10, the area of the whole rectangle, minus the unshaded region and what's left over would be the shaded region. So we go to the answer choices. It's not there. It's definitely not answer choice E because it's 10 minus 2 pi, not just 10 minus pi. But which is the answer? We need to make this somehow look like one of those. And hopefully looking at the answer choices will kind of tip you off to what we can do, but we just factor something out. That's what the answer choices, most of them are doing anyway, right? So what, what can we factor out? Well, what do they have in common? They have a two in common. So it's two, we'll factor that out, times 10 minus pi, right? Or, um, sorry, two goes into 10 five times, so five, uh, five minus pi. That's the exact same thing for whatever reason the test makers wrote it up there that way. The answer is D. We had to make our answer look like their answer, but hopefully you know how to do that. If not, now you do. You simply factor out what they have in common. So, Hello again. Hopefully you found the information in that segment helpful. If you did, just imagine how much you would learn in the full lesson, or better yet, the full course. If you like what you saw, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for our full course offerings. So thanks for watching, and go out and dominate the GMAT.